Here we have a new 2023 Honda Ridgeline. This one comes in the RTL trim level in modern steel metallic, and we have black leather interior. This one also features the Honda Performance Development black package, so we get 18 inch wheels along with a few other cool things. And the powertrain on this is gonna consist of a 280 horsepower, 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, made it to a nine speed automatic transmission. Come around the front end here, Pretty nice styling, even though it's a bit dated, but we do get LED headlamps along with LED fog lights. And they're way down there. But yeah, pretty good design, even over the years, it still look pretty nice. But down here, my favorite part are gonna be these 18 inch wheels that come with that HPD black package. We get passive keyless entry on the front. And then we have blind spot monitors there, memory seat controls, and then power door lock controls, rear window lock, power windows with the front two being one touch automatic up and down. We do have a locked fuel tank there and then plenty of storage with the bottle holder here in the door panel. Now over here we have the power mirror control so you can pick a side and adjust. So that's left, right, and then you can turn it off there. Ecom mode there. And this is for your lane departure, traction control, forward collision alert, and then your cargo bed light. And then here we have a 10-way power driver seat here with power lumbar support. But I have that seat up front adjusted for a pretty comfortable seating position for myself, being 6'3 with longer legs. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this leg room. So it's not fantastic back here, but this is also not a full-size pickup truck. So it has pretty good capabilities, but leg room back here, not terrific. But if you have your kids and whatnot, and it's a family vehicle, the adults will have plenty of space. And as you can see, this seat's a lot further back than that one. And you still have room behind there. You probably fit some of my size there. But I do like that we have seat back pockets on both sides. They didn't try and be cheap with that. And then we have rear AC vents there, little storage pocket there, little storage pocket here. And then our center seat, we can fold that down. Cup holders here, little storage pocket there. Now, I wish we had LEDs in here, but we don't. But on both sides, we do have a grab handle with a hanger hook. And we could probably hang two or three hangers there. Well, let's take a quick look at this window sticker. And I want to give a huge shout out to Daryl Watcher of Honda for allowing me to review this truck today. I'll leave a link below in the description for this truck as well as their entire new vehicle inventory. But you do get quite a bit standard here. The Honda sensing system, getting that lane keep assist, adaptive cruise. And then we do have that black package at $2,900. Stickers right at 46025. And this has a few other options on it as well, but pretty good fuel economy for an all wheel drive truck, 1824. But again, Capless fuel filler, and you can't click it, it's locked. So a lot of you all are gonna like that because you don't like having the push caps. But there's the back end there. Dual exhaust looks nice. And all these do come standard with a trailering hitch and you could pull up to 5,000 pounds. And it's definitely helpful having that all wheel drive system. Then we do have a spray and bed liner here. Little storage in here. And this also has some, I think those are floor mats right there. But I do like the V6 because it is pretty, pretty quiet in here. Or out here, excuse me. And then we can pull this handle here and this does this on both sides, but we can fold this all the way up and have all this additional storage to stack up whatever we need to. And especially if you're moving or something like that, it'd be nice to have if you just have two people up front or if you even just have one person up front, you can move that seat as well. And this one is going to be four way power for the front passenger. And we do have a lockable glove compartment here. Decent size, owner's manuals are in this one. 
I'm gonna cut this AC down for when I get in. But the styling of the Ridgeline, like I said, it's due for an update, but still a really good looking truck. And it's one of the few trucks that you can get that's somewhat fuel efficient. And you still have that all wheel drive capability. And there is a huge market for people who want something like this. If you're in between a Maverick and an F-150, the Ridgeline is that perfect middle point. And it's mostly covered up, but there is a 3.5 liter V6 underneath all of that. But now let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat. So leather wrapped steering wheel feels very nice. And I do love having paddle shifters, but we'll get back to the steering wheel here momentarily. Over to the radio here. This is the home page. So hit audio here and we do have AM, FM, XM radio along with Bluetooth audio. And then we have wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto compatibility. We even have an aux input as well. So nice to have that. And then our settings here, if you ever need to use Wi-Fi, you do have access for all that here, as well as your Bluetooth. Now, touchscreen can be a little finicky, but and then your brightness here, you can adjust that. You have two modes, and then if you want to, you can actually toggle it here. And then we have access to a few apps on this. So a calculator, which is interesting to have on here, you can use that. So that's neat, I haven't seen that. But volume knob is here. If you're turning it up, you can just hit the mute right there. And then you can also just click there for the mute. Hazards are gonna be right here. And then let's show this backup camera real quick. There's that, and then we have the three angles, so the wide angle, regular angle, and then the narrow one. If you're backing into something, don't want to hit a wall or whatever, you have that option. And then the dual zone automatic climate controls are right here. Pretty easy to use, adjust temperature on either side there, and then you can hit the rear on and off there. You can go to the rear settings and adjust their fan speed as well as their temperature from either side. And we can toggle that AC on and off too. And then modes where the airflow is going, just hit that there. You can sync pretty easily. I like that we can click it on and off. And in the auto mode, you can toggle that by fooling with the fan speed if you want to turn that off. And then easy on and off to turn the whole system off and then defroster here. And then three stage heated seats for the driver and front passenger right here. Then we have a 12 volt and a USB-A port there. And you'll use that USB-A to run that Apple CarPlay Android Auto. And then to shift the nine speed, P for park, pull here for reverse, press here for neutral, press here for drive, press it again. And you have that sport mode and you can manually shift. And then we also have our intelligent traction management. So for the all wheel drive system, you can choose between normal, snow, mud, and sand, depending on what's going on that'll control your all-wheel drive system and then your auto stop toggle is here pretty good storage in the center console space you do have a 12 volt as well as another usb a port and this little light down in there as well and then you have a sliding tray that you can move back and forth and then you can also remove it if you want to and then it just comes out and then you just put it back on the tracks and then you're good to go And then to the sunroof here, buttons are here. You can one touch push or one touch tilt the roof open. Goes back decently, pretty good distance. Then you can close it back one touch as well. And you also have a sliding rear window. So touch of a button, you can open that, close it from up here. And then Sunglasses holder here, 
And that's interesting to have. You don't usually see that in a, a pickup truck, the mirror like they have in the Odyssey so you can see the kids. That's pretty funny. And then over here we have our volume controls and this is for our track list or radio station preset controls. Use these buttons here and then you can hit the source button and you can toggle between AM, FM, XM. And then if you have something else hooked up, you can use that as well. And then you have other buttons here, Bluetooth buttons, voice recognition. And then this is for your gauge cluster. So you can see you go through there and then you can reset and then lane keep assist here. That's for the lane centering actually. And then this is for your adaptive cruise and you can set all of that and then gap adjust is here. Headlamp controls. And you have your high beams there, fog lights are here, blinkers there. And then to the right side of the steering wheel, you have your windshield wipers. So one time, and then you have intermittent, low, high. You can adjust your intermittent here. And then you have front wiper fluid there. You can adjust the brightness of the gauge cluster here. Interesting place to put those, but it's up and out of the way. There's our push button start. And finally, here is our key fob with remote start. But next is time we go ahead and take this 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTL out on the road for a quick test drive. So behind the wheel of the Honda Ridgeline here, it's uh, I like how it drives and I might get a lot of slack for that, but it just drives really nicely. It drives like a Honda Pilot and for people in this market who want a truck but they don't want to haul around a big truck they don't use it except for going camping or whatever and they pull a small trailer this is the perfect vehicle for you because then when you aren't pulling something you don't have to worry about getting 15 miles per gallon in the city you're driving a v6 as opposed to a v8 so you're getting better highway mileage as well it's just there's a a segment out there that no one else is really touching except maybe the Tacoma Frontier but the Ridgeline is in a class of its own because it drives more like a car than those trucks to me and the V6 has pretty good power it's the same engine that's in the Honda Pod so you're getting that 280 horsepower but for towing that 5,000 pounds like I said it really depends on what you are towing this is meant for the buyer that does a little less frequent towing, I would say. But I mean, you have that same reliability of a Honda engine, so. I mean, you're just not gonna be towing anything heavy with it, but you can tow, like I said, a light camper, a light trailer. If you need to put a load on the back of a trailer up to 5,000 pounds, this will do it no issue. And it helps having the paddle shifters as well. If you do need to climb a hill or whatever, you can make sure you're getting all the power possible without necessarily straining your engine so you can kind of do as you please there but again when it comes to the actual driving this is much more of a joy to drive than pretty much any other pickup truck if you don't like driving pickup trucks because like I said this feels like a Honda Pilot it drives like it and then you have that capability of being able to haul with this as well as tow up to that 5K mark. And like I said, especially for a lot of, I don't wanna say older people, but people who like to, who, people who are outdoorsy, who don't have a huge camper, this is the perfect truck for you because this does, it doesn't feel like a Tacoma or Frontier where you're still in a pickup truck, it's just a small truck. This feels like a Honda Pilot that has a bed. And that's one thing I love about it. There's the auto stop there. So in sport mode with the paddle shifters, this is a pretty quick truck. It's actually somewhat fast. 
but I like that taking out a, I'm still in sport mode now, but after I let off the throttle here, it still drives normally and I can get it back into regular drive mode and then it'll get down into the, the lowest gear possible or highest gear possible. So whether that's seventh, eighth or ninth gear to be more fuel efficient. So I'm expecting that you can get better than the 24 miles per gallon highway and even better if you baby it, the 18 miles per gallon city, because you do have the flexibility of a nine speed automatic. And I will say the auto stop here, the auto stop with this ridge line is almost flawless because I don't notice the engine cutting off. And honestly, I'm not even paying attention and the truck's just ready to go again when I let off my, or let my foot off the brake. So that's one good thing about this truck for truck buyers who don't like having auto stop. Of course, you can also cut that off as I showed you earlier, but it's just nice to know that it's not as intrusive as a lot of other systems out there. But I'm gonna turn on the lane cube assist and the adaptive cruise just to try it out. I'm not gonna have a lot of time before I have to start stopping because of this rush hour traffic, but. So it's keeping that safe distance between myself and the vehicle in front of me. And as I cut that down, it'll get closer to that vehicle in front of me. So the system's pretty good. For some reason, I feel like in the newer Hondas, it's better than this one, but still a great lane centering tool just to take the some of the hard work out of driving. But as I'll be sitting here for quite some time, this is gonna bring me to the end of my review of the new 2023 Honda Ridgeline in the RTL trim level.